Hello everybody and welcome to another product review video and today we're going to talk about the AK Interactive third generation acrylic colors. I've got a lot of requests to review these and uh, I picked up a whole bunch of them and uh, we're going to go through a little review today. So uh, first things first, let's talk about the basics. So this is 236 different colors they have in the range. So it's quite a large line. Um, there's different uh, elements to them, that is to say there's sort of a main line, there's the metallics, there's the fluorescence like I've got here, there are pastel colors, uh, so there's a lot of different elements to this. Uh, Range-wise, name-wise, sort of color-wise, they will feel very familiar to you if you're used to, say, um, the Vallejo model color sets. A lot of these feel very similarly named, very similarly colored they're clearly meant to directly sort of hit model color uh directly where they live that was sort of immediately obvious if you if you look through the different colors uh they are uh, i got all mine from michigan toy soldier uh where they are four dollars a piece for the bottle so they're pretty standard price uh for a pretty you know standard amount of paint right these are just your standard 17 milliliter dropper bottles at least as far as size now, there is something different as far as the uh, construction of the, uh, of the bottle itself goes. Uh, Squeeze-wise and stuff like that, it feels basically like any other bottle you've ever used. But you may notice it has this very funny cap. Uh, so, when you look here, right, the cap itself, I don't know if that's visible or not. Yeah, can you see how it has this extra thing in here? to sort of poke down inside. Basically, it has this indentation that's supposed to keep paint from clogging up. And I will say I haven't had a, a clog yet with these, so that's good. And at the same time, they have a little, that indentation on the other side here means you can like put a little drop of paint in, in the top and there's a little reservoir for it. And that way, if, you, if you're a person who, you know, stores your paints kind of like this on the shelf or something, then you still know what colors you're dealing with. Uh, they are uh, very highly pigmented. They have a very high opacity right out of the uh, pot or out of the bottle, whatever you want to say. Uh, I am impressed by them. I, I'd say that sort of it, uh, upon my usage with them, and I've used them a lot over the past several weeks, I always like to make sure that I use products uh, quite a lot before I do a review of them. I don't just want to put five minutes of paint time in and then come to you and say, yeah, everything's great. So these have gotten lots and lots of hours. I'd say I've spent more than 150 hours painting with these at this point, so I feel confident enough to at least do a review. Uh, and the first thing I noticed is one, extremely high opacity, real good sort of grip onto the miniature. They're solid, they're durable. Uh, putting washes over them, putting other elements on top of them. I haven't disrupted paint layers or anything like that. Uh, so I... I think they're a really nice base formulation. They flow really well and smoothly, so I suspect they probably do have a little bit of like a, a flow improver or something like that put into the mix. Uh, and in fact, in using them with both brush and airbrush, I found them to be uh, quite adept at either. And much like uh, other very highly pigmented lines, uh, you can use a very small amount of this in an airbrush uh, with a lot of thinner. So I was mixing this at about a five or six to one ratio at minimum and still getting very good results out of it. Okay. Uh, but we're going to bring back our old friend, Larry the Ogre. Here he is. It's been a little while since he's been in a video, but he's back. And uh, I'm going to show you what some of this looks like. So we have the ogre here, and I've got a little bit of the sunny skin tone, uh, which is, of course, a very popular Vallejo color. Again, name-wise, they're kind of exactly what you expect. If you're coming from something like Vallejo model color, you're going to be very comfortable with the naming conventions they use. As you can see, very high opacity on the initial application. That was uh, poured straight out with just a tiny amount of thinning. We've got a little, I'll, I'll just show you some other colors here. At the same time, they do thin down into a glaze nicely. I've got a little bit of violet red I've thinned down here. So you can see 
that's going to go on nice and smooth because of the uh what i found is that these are actually quite excellent for wet blending i've noticed they do hold up well to various glazes um, i was able to uh, work them into a nice glaze, but because of also because of the opacity because of the thickness because of the rich pigment I found they did work really well for things like uh, Wet blending and or two brush blending anything like that. We've got a little ice yellow here We'll mix into our flesh tone yet again if you're familiar with your, our old friend ice yellow from uh, from other uh, From other ranges this is going to be very similar ice yellow is certainly a very popular color on uh, my painting palette and I was very happy with theirs provides a nice smooth application as you can see uh, I think what I'll say is overall what I was impressed with with these is that they felt smooth they dry uh, pretty matte uh, for the most part uh, I noticed with a couple of the colors that they, they had yeah, maybe a slight more satin sheen to them but for the most part they're pretty matte um, and they're, they're just actually really smooth and easy to work with. Good for feathering. They maintain their color for very thin glazes. Like you can work them way, way down and they don't lose any of that pigmentation. You still get a nice, uh, good, rich application of the color. So I liked all of that. Uh, the fluorescent colors, which I'll show here. I, I really liked the pastels, by the way. I've used a couple of those. I don't happen to have any of those to right here to show you today but uh, I really like the fluorescent color we'll just kind of apply some of that over here um, like many of the fluorescents they are the thinner more transparent colors in the range so word of warning they don't cover like the uh, other ones did I've played around with a couple of the fluorescents and found the same thing if we maybe give them a little bit up here you'll see that it is like most of the fluorescents that are out there on the market they are very transparent. However, what I did notice when working with the fluorescence quite a bit, uh, despite their transparent nature, okay, like you can see, I can just keep picking that up until it's effectively gone. And part of that's because of the surface I'm on. And part of that's because of the, uh, the nature of the fluorescent paint. We'll give them some nice pink. There you go. Uh, part of what I did notice about this, though, with the fluorescent is that it is far smoother than a lot of the other fluorescents that I've uh, that I that I see out there. This reminds me a lot more of something like the uh, the War Colors fluorescent, which is my current running favorite, both in intensity and smoothness. There's no chalkiness to it or anything like that. That's something I've noticed with a lot of different uh, fluorescent colors is that they will go chalky real fast and i haven't really seen that problem with these no matter where you apply them they tend to stay rather smooth and obviously uh rather effective i do still find that the best way to apply the fluorescent is more or less to paint on like put a nice size glob on the mini and then kind of paint on the miniature where you smooth it out okay uh so uh, overall, I would say that I really like these paints. Uh, they're everything I've tried in the matte line, which is about 15 different colors that I grabbed randomly uh, across the spectrum of the rainbow. Everything I tried in, in the standard color range, I've actually really enjoyed. Um, things like this deck tan or reddish gray uh, or their blue green, again, many of the colors being very similar to Vallejo. Uh, model color range, I found them to be uh, quite superior in their performance, good coverage, uh, smooth, nice mostly matte finish, uh, and, uh, and, and quite effective in their, their colors. So they dry and you get a pretty true color, which I enjoyed. They don't fade or change. Sometimes you'll see that with some paint where the dry color looks a little different than the wet. These I found maintained a pretty true color. Uh, I like them through both brush and airbrush. I've been using them a lot in both ways. Good results there. Uh, what I will say is just like any paint range in messing with them, you do have to learn the range and its properties. So for example, some of them I did notice had uh, weren't as quite, and I don't mean the fluorescence here, I just mean in the regular matte range, weren't as completely opaque 
as others, and I suspect that probably has to do with the exact mix they had to use to keep it flowing, to keep it uh, nice and uh, moving as far as the paint goes, and it can maintain its consistency. Uh, I noticed it mainly with some of the off gray colors, uh, where this would happen, you'd still get a little bit more transparency than I would think, but I suspect that's again because that pigment has a lot of white in it, they don't want it to go chalky, so they added the additional elements. That's just supposition on my part. Uh, my favorites so far that I've tried are their blue-green, their ice yellow, and their pastel violet, and this uh, violet red that you saw me use earlier. Uh, I really like all of those, but there's a huge range here. Like I said, this is 236 colors, so you've got lots of time. There we can see that fluorescent nice and dry. You can see it's actually really, really ripping bright pink. Uh, and you can see down here where I thinned it out, it says uh, dry with a nice sort of just you know, tint color over the, the surface. So you can use it in a couple different ways. Overall, I give these paints a definite A. Uh, I think they're a, a great product. Uh, I think they're very equivalent to something like Pro Acryl, but obviously they, this is a larger series of paints, so depending on what you're looking for. Uh, I don't think you could go wrong investing in some of these if you're, if you're looking for uh, a, a paint range to expand out to. If you already have a pretty significant paint range that includes stuff like Vallejo Model Color, that includes, you know, things like Pro Acryl, uh, which are the two sort of closest equivalents, I think, to the exact performance here. Um, I, I don't know that there's a need there. I haven't found anything uh, about these that makes them completely unique or completely innovative over... Uh, those existing paint ranges. Uh, that being said, I do use them quite a bit, the ones I bought, and I tend to mix them interchangeably with those other two ranges I just mentioned. So, uh, final score for me is an A. Uh, do check them out if there's something you think you'd be interested in. Uh, I like them quite a bit. And if you like this, uh, give it a like. Subscribe for additional product reviews and hobby cheating and everything we do here. Uh, if you've got more questions about the paint, feel free to drop them down in the comments. I'm happy to answer any questions you have. But as always, I very much appreciate you watching this one, and we'll see you next time.